like the eagle watching the direction of the wind and then it spreads its wings that's what we call soaring it does not fly the eagle soars in this kingdom we rise upon the strength of the light that we have hallelujah the bible says god called the light day and the darkness he called night and so day in the spirit is not the chronological passage of time but when your light comes hallelujah yeah he called the light day and the darkness he called night and the bible says weeping endures for as long as it is night but joy comes with the morning so i want us to pay attention we're exploring in this conference faith in its entirety when i saw the theme i was really very encouraged because i think that many believers understand instinctively the subject of faith and its relevance to the believer's life but most people and even those who have been raised by those who preach faith have not really understood the entire dimensions of faith that are responsible for the holistic development and the victory of the believer and I trust that all through the sessions in this conference that God will add line upon line, precept upon precept until we have a thorough understanding of the workings of faith. So are you ready this afternoon? I'm teaching on a subject that I titled The Other Side of Faith. Please write it down and please listen. The Other Side of Faith the other side of faith the bible is full of other sides when you read i think that's mark 4 35 jesus said let us go to the other side there is always the other side to everything and if you do not understand the other side of faith you will not be standing on a very strong foundation hallelujah now let me begin this session by establishing a few things and please lend me your attention number one I wrote here that the end of the believer's journey with God, please listen, the end of the believer's journey with God is that you eventually become a manifestation of the glory of God. This is God's goal at the back of his dealing with all believers, regardless your assignment, regardless your background. The moment you begin to journey with God, this is the intent at the back of his mind. Not just heaven. Are we together? Not just victory over Satan as it were. But God's goal for every believer is that eventually in your Christian experience, you become a holistic capture of the glory of God. In Romans chapter 8, when we read from verse 18 and 19, the Bible says, Paul is speaking now, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time, he says, are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. The next verse says, For the earnest expectation of creation awaited the manifestation of the sons of God. Are we together now? So the Bible tells us that there is a dimension of God's glory that God seeks to be revealed in a believer. In fact, the apostle coins it beautifully. He calls us living epistles. That means our lives should be an explanation of the multifaceted dimensions of God. Ephesians 2 and verse 10 says, We are his workmanship. Are we still together? created in christ jesus he says unto good works which god had uh, before time afore time it's a preordination god is not just inventing it hoping uh, you know that he would make our lives become that he was at the back of his mind at the point of our creation so every believer must have this that your life eventually should become a manifestation of the glory of god so regardless where God finds you, when he begins that journey with you, as a believer, you must sustain this orientation that regardless my life, whether it carries any capture of glory and grace or not, that as I begin to walk with God, 
the end product of God's dealing with me, are we together? Is that my life will eventually, when you know this, it will sustain the staying power. It will give you the ability to continue even when you don't understand what God is doing. Are we together now? Yes. When you drive, say, from here to the farthest part in Lagos, for over 99% of your journey, you do not see your destination. But the awareness that it is there, it motivates you to continue. Are we learning already? So most believers are at a loss as to what God is doing with them exactly. They just know instinctively he's making a prophet out of me. He's making an apostle. He's making a businessman. I tell you that is, that is not enough motivation. As far as the challenges you will have to overcome to become, you need to know that God's goal for me and you in Christ is that we eventually become a manifestation of the glory of God. Galatians 1.24 must become our testimony eventually. And they glorified God in me. Are we learning already? This is the first point I need to establish. So regardless what you are going through, whether you understand your work with God currently or not, you must have this at the back of your mind that the end of every believer's journey is that you and I become experientially a manifestation of the glory of God. I like the way Paul puts it teaching the Ephesians, the church in Ephesus. In Ephesians, I believe, chapter 3 and verse 10, he says to the intent that now, unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be made known by the ecclesia, the church, the manifold, multifaceted wisdom of God. Hallelujah. The glory of God is a holistic capture of everything that makes God God. His wisdom, his power, his favor every dimension every component in god that makes him desired that makes him admirable that makes him worthy of our worship he intends that it be imported and be made manifest in the life of the believer that means eventually your life should become a sign and a wonder it is true this is not just something you claim it is something you become is the end product of a journey that your life becomes a fearful wonder first to you and then to creation this is how god is glorified john 17 and verse 1 he lifted his voice to heaven jesus is praying now and he said father the hour has come he says glorify thy son that thy son may glorify thee john chapter 15 and verse 8 herein is our father glorified when ye bear much fruit so shall you be my disciples verse 16 of the same chapter says you have not chosen me he says but i have chosen you and ordained you you know what it means to ordain to legitimize your operation i have ordained you and legitimized you to go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit will remain god's goal for you and i in christ is that we become eventually an experiential manifestation of the glory of God. Hallelujah. You must have this at the back of your mind. The second point that I want to establish very quickly is that our work with God and our exploits in the kingdom, listen carefully, will always demand partnership with the realm of the spirit. Our work with God and our exploits in this kingdom will always demand our partnership with the realm of the spirit the structure for manifestation is that the spirit and the bride say come not the bride alone not the spirit alone it is the union of the spirit and the bride that can say come healing comes when the spirit says come and the bride also says come everything that happens on earth is a union between the spirit and the bride so if the spirit is saying come, if the spirit is saying be lifted, if the spirit is saying advance and the bride does not sustain the intelligence to walk in partnership, that may never manifest. Are we together now? At every point in your Christian life, there will be a demand for partnership with the realm of the spirit. Jesus began to teach us this in what we have come to know as the Lord's prayer. He says, when you pray, pray in this manner not just by this recitation in this manner our father he says then he says which art in heaven 
immediately he tells you that he resides in a domain that is beyond physical so you will need another technology to be able to make that connection he is not physical like flesh and blood which art in heaven are we together now that means any discussion between you and God will demand your awareness of the realm of the spirit then in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3 we'll go there shortly the Bible says through faith we understand we were not there but through faith we understand that the walls were framed they had their material expression by the Word of God so that the things which are seen this is how the spirit operates were not made of the things which do appear John 1 and verse 3 the Bible says all things were made by him and without him, that means outside of partnership with him, the word was not anything made that was made. Are we together? So you must understand that your entire journey, this has nothing to do with whether you are a man of God in ministry or a businessman, a career person, a family person. The moment you come into this life, this kingdom life, the demand is that you must consistently walk in partnership with the realm of the spirit. In fact, James put it beautifully in chapter 2 and verse 26. He says he was teaching on faith and works and he borrowed an interesting phenomenon and he says for us, the body without the spirit is dead so faith without works is dead also that means anytime you see a material frame there is a spirit component that sustains it if your business only has a body it will die there has to be a spirit sustaining it are we together now this was what david understood when he stood before goliath he said, you are a body that is powered by a covenant. I come to you, he says, you come to me with your spheres, but I come to you in a name. This material frame is not what will fight you. There is a backing from the spirit. This is what he was telling Goliath. It would be stupid for a young boy to stand before that beast. Veterans of war were running away from him and here comes a very young teenager. Your Christian experience will always demand partnership with the realm of the spirit. This is what necessitates the understanding of the subject of faith. Are we together now? So four times in the Bible, scripture says that just shall live by faith. You find that first in Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 4. Please write for reference. Hebrews 2 and verse 4. Then Romans 1 17. Then Galatians 3 11. Finally, we find that in Hebrews 10, 38. Habakkuk chapter 2, my apologies. Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 4. Did I say Habakkuk? Yeah. Romans 1, 17, Galatians 3, 11, Hebrews 10, 38. All of these together, they speak the same language that the just in Christ, whoever is in Christ, will live by faith. Now, let's talk about faith. Are you ready? Hebrews 11. Thank you, Jesus. Hebrews 11. You see why church is a beautiful place? There are things you only get in church. I was glad when he said unto me, they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Hebrews chapter 11. This we have known and believed to be about the most concise capture of the subject of faith. Let's look at verse 1. Please lend me your attention. This is truly where my teaching starts. It says, now faith is the substance of things. Everybody say things. Please, one more time, say things. The substance of things hoped for. Then it says the evidence of things not seen. One more time, say things. So verse 1 carries an idea that faith has to do with things. Are we together? The common expression there is that faith is the substance the tangibility of the things that we hope for then it calls it the evidence of the things so faith has to do with things number one this dimension is not new and strange to the average believer we understand that faith gives a man capacity to obtain things are we together 
But I want to introduce to you another dimension, and this is why I call it the other side of faith. Let's read verse 2 together. If you're a Christian, let's shout verse 2 together. Ready? One, to read. For by it... One more time, please. What did the elders obtain? A good report. So the Bible tells us that number one, faith is required to deal with the matter of things. But that there is a dimension to faith that many believers do not understand. It does not deliver things. It delivers a testimonial. A good report. He says all the elders in Hebrew, Hebrews 11, they obtained a good report. So from scripture here, number one, we see that faith has two assignments. Please pay attention. Number one, the first assignment of faith is to deliver desires and deliver promises that are consistent with the will of God. The first assignment of faith as revealed here is as a platform that delivers desired expectations, that delivers promises. But this is not the only assignment of faith. In God's economy, the most superior assignment of faith, listen carefully, is a platform for obtaining good report. What is good report? A testimonial before God. I looked up that word testimony or testimonial and let me read for you what I found then we continue. Is God speaking to someone already? A testimonial is defined as a written declaration certifying to a person's character, conduct or qualification. I take it again. A testimonial is a written declaration certifying to a person's character a person's conduct or a person's qualification from which recommendations are made. That means the basis for promotion, the basis for increase is when you examine a man's testimonial. Are we together? In corporate life, you don't promote people emotionally and arbitrarily. No, there is a record. Are we together? A record of service, a record, it is the recommendation whether to leave that person at that level or promote him to a higher realm is at the basis of examining his testimonial. And the Bible says the assignment of faith is to print out your testimonial, what you will present before God and life that necessitates your rising, necessitates your advancement. And the Bible says with that faith, all the elders obtain good reports. Hallelujah. That means everywhere we study faith in the Bible, you must look out for these two things. Number one, desires and expectations obtained, but number two, reports and testimonials established. If your perspective of faith is only about receiving things and desired expectations, there is a side of God you will never experience and there is a side of grace you will never touch. Are we together now? Now, the average believer's understanding of faith is just with respect to things. And you are right. It is only that you are incomplete. That's why verse 1 starts by telling us that now faith is, are we still together? The substance of things and the evidence of things. One more time. The substance of things and the evidence of things. And things are very important. Mark eleven twenty four. Jesus was teaching and he says, What things soever ye desire. He says, When ye pray, believe that thou receivest them and thou shall have them. So there is a place for obtaining promises. Scripture calls them exceeding great and precious promises. It says that by them we might be the partakers of his divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Through faith, many obtain promises in Scripture. But that faith, through faith, Bible faith, is not limited to just obtaining things. There is a higher and more superior assignment of faith. We... By faith, obtain good reports. Are we still together? Now, let's look at Hebrews 11. My God. Verse 
four. The Bible then, to buttress this understanding, it lists for us five people, among others. In fact, many of them. But the first five, I want to examine the first five personalities in the Bible that he calls elders. You will find out that none of them necessarily received any promise, but they all receive reports. Because you will be learning that there are some times in your journey where the promise is not yet in view. And because of that, the devil will make you believe you are not walking by faith. Yet there is a report. The whole journey is building a track record. Go to verse 4. Let's hurry up for sake of time. I'm just starting my session now. It says by faith. The first elder that the Bible now begins to teach us faith using his life is the man Abel. It says, by faith, Abel offered unto God. Are we still together? A more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness, a testimonial. What was his testimonial? That he was righteous. That is it. He didn't obtain things, but there was a testimony before God that he was righteous, willing to give everything to honor God. And the Bible still calls it faith. This is the number one personality that the Bible uses. So you need to understand the mind of God in discussing faith. Are you ready for number two? Number two is called Noah. Please give it to us. Verse five. Let's hurry up. Media, let's work together. Verse five. Still Hebrews 11 and verse five. Okay, Enoch, my apologies. The Bible says by faith Enoch was translated. Remember, he's telling us elders now. That he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. Read the remaining parts, please. For before his translation, verse 5 now, just keep verse 5 media. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. This was his report. Hmm. <laughs> Second individual, no mention of things, but there was a testimony. Are you ready for number six? Verse, go to verse seven. The third person, I believe, the man Noah. Are you ready for Noah now? So we have looked at number one, Abel. Number two, Enoch. Number three, by faith again. Noah being warned of God of things not seen as yet. The Bible says he was moved with reverence. Reverence. He prepared an ark to the saving of his house by which he condemned the world and became an heir of righteousness by faith. That was his testimony. That he reverenced God. He took God seriously. When God spoke, he did not join the mockers to mock him. Are you ready for number four? Hmm. Let's go to verse 11. The fourth personality that the, in that order is the man Abraham that we know and call the father of faith. Let's go to verse 11. 11, 11, Hebrews. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go into a place, watch this now, which he should after receive for an inheritance, the Bible says he obeyed. And he went out not knowing where he was going to go. That's verse 8, huh? Jump to verse 11, please. Jump to verse 11. Thank you. Through faith. No, no, no. Hebrews 11 and 11. Thank you. Through faith, he says, Sarah also received strength. Watch this to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past her age. What was her report? She judged him faithful that had promised. Is someone learning now? So can you see that the Bible tells us that these elders, do you know that not all of them obtained promises? You want me to show you in the Bible? The Bible talks about women who died who called their dead back to life and others rejected willingly the promise for a better resurrection. There were those who had the power to receive deliverance, but they chose report more than things. They said in God's economy, having a testimony 
before God is greater than just obtaining things. And they had the power to be delivered, but they say will not be delivered. And yet the Bible called all of them elders. Are we learning now? Because you see, <laughs> the character of faith is this. Watch this. The testimony of knowing and trusting God through the journey is more superior to the desires obtained in the journey. The testimony, your becoming with God is greater than your receiving. Both of them are important and needed for your overall excelling. But in order of spiritual priority, the testimony of your trusting God, the testimony of your becoming, that spiritual evolution is of greater value in the spirit than obtaining things. Are we together? Any faith journey I wrote here should leave you knowing and trusting God better even more than the results you obtain. So if all you show me in your walk with God are the physical materials that come by engaging the word, I will congratulate you, but I will tell you there is a side of God you do not yet know. Hmm. Are we learning? So Bible faith, therefore, is a combination of reports and promises obtained, not promises alone. Bible faith is a combination of a testimonial before God and then the promises that come. Are we together? There is faith as a school. There is faith as a journey that helps you know God in his various dimensions. And the Bible says it gives you a noble report. Second Timothy 1 and verse 12. The apostle was speaking and he says, I know whom I have believed. I know whom I have believed. I didn't just believe him. I know whom I have believed. You can try to walk out and believe who you do not know. Jesus was rebuking the woman at the well. And he said, "Ye worship ye what you do not know. So you can have all of the activities of religion happening and yet you do not know him. Remember in Athens, they were bowing down and wrote an inscription to an unknown God. It says, I know whom I have believed. Are we still together? It says, and I am persuaded. Please go back to 2 Timothy. That he is able to keep that which is committed unto him. The end point of this journey of faith with God, when you obtain that testimonial, it plants conviction. That conviction is the raw material that brings promises. Are we together now? Yes. See, when you meet people who just mechanically believe God, you see the difficulty in trying to receive, the embarrassment, their ego is on the line. They are hoping the word does not fail them. There is no testimony yet. They are just trying to obtain as proof that they met God. But a man that has a testimony with God is not embarrassed whether results come or not because he has obtained a nobler path. And can I tell you, for such people, results always happen eventually. Do you believe what you're hearing? Listen. The Bible lets us know that faith on one hand, let me repeat again for your understanding, is a platform, a spiritual platform that converts spiritual realities. Remember what Paul said, that we have been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. I have other sessions who deal with the dynamics of obtaining promises. But to start my session tonight, it's important that we bring this other side of faith. Because there are many people you've been trusting God, as you call it, for many promises to be made manifest. And if they say those who have faith stand up, you may feel embarrassed because you do not have any physical evidence. But I'm telling you that faith does not stop at things. There is a report you have in the spirit. I don't have a job yet. But my prayer life has grown, trusting God. I don't have a job yet, 
but God kept me through 2023 not knowing everyone there is there is all the names of God you see were products of experiences they did not just name him arbitrarily no there was an experience that produced the knowledge of Rafa and Jaira and Sikenu God has not stopped being named your entire spiritual journey should give God a name that should be your gift to a generation that in my walk with God, I have come to learn him. Hmm. So you can stand like the psalmist and said, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I be afraid of? He says, the Lord is the strength of my life. This is conviction. Conviction. Because there are many believers who are being discouraged. There are people post-COVID. There are many believers who are trying to recover. I trusted God and yet this person died. I trusted God and this person battled cancer. And you know sometimes we just cover it up quietly in church and we say, well, God is faithful. But there are many believers about to leave the things of God because it does not make sense. The reason is because we have given a definition that only ends at obtaining things. I am bringing a dimension for you. Like Job said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Listen. This is what gives stability to the believer's experience. So people will ask you and say, why do you rejoice? No house yet, no car yet. And you tell them, the things have not come. But there is a testimony of faithfulness through the storm. There is a testimony of singing in the midst of the storm. This one is called faith. Hallelujah. Listen, Job had things, but Job did not have a testimony. And Satan told God, based on what we read in scripture, he said, he's only serving you because of things. And God said, you can take the things. Let the man get the testimony. Let the man get the testimony. Let things go away. But let the testimony remain. And the wife of Job said, why do you still hold on to your integrity? Curse God and die. And Job said, all the days of my appointed time, there were no things. His body was not healed, but there was a testimony. Hear me? And then in Job chapter 42 and verse 10, the Bible says, and God restored. Things will always happen when the track record is established. Remember, I defined for you a testimonial as a credential that is, is a concise capture of your integrity, your character, your trustworthiness. That is the basis for your being recommended. Can I tell you, there are many of you, I have always read the story of Mary. Gabriel comes to Mary and says, you are highly favored. I do not see our definition of favor happen for once in the life of Mary. Because everything that surrounded her life after that announcement was controversy and trouble. So, I don't understand, Gabriel. You came from the presence of God. And you tell a woman she's highly favored. And the next thing is one trouble after the other. You will be learning that for you to truly be a champion in the spirit, you must have both crowns and scars. Listen. The difference between Jesus and the 24 elders, all of them have crowns, but only one has a scar on his hand. When you get to heaven and you are searching for those with crowns, Matthias have crowns, elders have crowns, many have crowns, but search for the one whose scar is a testimony of love that he had the option of calling 10,000 angels yet because of his love. So when the Bible says, for God so loved the world, it was not a statement, it's a report card. My cry to Sarah, Saul to Paul, Cephas to Peter, every time God met men, his interest was them before their conditions. Because a transformed you cannot remain in the same condition that met your old self. Do you believe what you are hearing? I'm teaching you authentic Bible.
unshakable faith that makes you a champion in this kingdom. So you can laugh through storms. And when those who do not ask, they don't, they don't love God, they ask you questions. But you just lost your father. Why are you dancing and rejoicing? But it looked like, you, I mean, your office just packed up. Where is your God? The next time they ask you, tell them while things are on their way coming, there is a report, an accreditation in the spirit. Who is God speaking to? Hmm. Now I've given you an answer and an answer you have been desiring. What answer do I give men when they say, where is your God? Tell them the problem is your understanding. Don't miss any session. I will be teaching you what we call results in the kingdom. Because you see, everything we call results in the kingdom is with respect to the will of God beyond your desire. We are going to examine the subject of results. <laughs> are we together? So there are some of you, while heaven is clapping for you already, a champion is imagining the spirit. You are busy saying, God, but the car has not come. And God says, you mean the five years training is just to give you a car? No, come on. No, come on. Hallelujah. You've forgotten the discipline of prayer that situation brought for you. That it was on account of it. I know the man eventually died. But how about the three hours prayer every night? Now that the person is gone, it has become a habit in you. You can't undo it again. That is a track record in the spirit. How about your diligence? A heightened level of consecration you came into. Although, listen, the reason most of you do not know why sometimes God keeps quiet regardless what you are going through. It's not that he's irresponsible. He has found your confusion as a healthy tool that leads you to his presence. He will prefer to leave you there until you get there. As he trains you, he will give you a higher perspective. And he's not afraid of time passing because he can restore. He's not afraid of things living because he can restore. Listen. All through the time that Job went through his tragedy, God never spoke until chapter 38. And when God shows up, you would think he would comfort Job and say, Job, I understand. He said, who is this that darkened counsel without knowledge? This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Are you taking a minute or two to absorb this reality as an imprint upon your spirit? Hallelujah. Listen to me. I hope you know that Jacob's frustration in the Bible, watch this now. In chapter 28 of Genesis, the Bible says Jacob came to a place called Luz and he lay there to sleep. And then the Bible tells us, watch this, that he saw a ladder that, as, that went to the heavens and angels ascending and descending. He was not transformed with that encounter because all he was looking for was things. The next thing that will happen to Job's life was his tragedy in the house of Laban. And Laban began to manipulate him against the indices of things. But by the time we get to Genesis chapter 32, the Bible says for him to receive an encounter, he had to dismiss things. Cows go away. Wives go away. When he was alone. No things. God said you are ready for a report now. And he came to him. And in all of that encounter, there was nothing about things. He said, what is your name? 
Oh, bless me, oh. And God says, let me show you how we bless in the kingdom. We give you credibility in the spirit. Hear me. Let me speak to a man of God here. You, ministry may not look like it is working, but there is credibility you are establishing in the spirit. This is what the Bible means when it says, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. He, they are not known in the spirit because they have. They are known in the spirit because of what they have become. There is a register in the spirit where the rankings of men are recorded. This is what translates to authority within the cosmos. You don't just tell people be healed just because you saw it in scripture. Believe me, you'll be disappointed. There is a level of stature that is established in the spirit on account of your becoming. Let no man trouble me, he said, for I bear in my body. There is a record that I've served God in the midst of pain. Take it high for me. Is God speaking to someone? For by it, the elders obtain. There are many elders that did not obtain anything in terms of promises. The Bible still asks them. There were others who were brought back to life, but there were others who refused. They rejected deliverance. And the Bible still called all of them elders. The one thing all of them had was faith. Then in verse 37, it says, Time will fail me to talk of Gideon and Jephthah and Barak. It says, Men who to faith subdued kingdoms, who are getting there, shut the mouth of lions, wrought righteousness, obtained promises. But then it does not stop there. Verse 34. He says, quench the violence of fire, escapes the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, works valiant in fight, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. 35, women who received their dead back to life and others were tortured. Watch this, not accepting deliverance that they might obtain. So they still obtain something. The Bible calls it a good report. Hallelujah. Do you know how the anointing, how olive is made? You carry the olive and then in the squeezing and in that pressing, they will keep going round and pressing it. When you sympathize with the condition of the olive, oil will never come. There are many, the human spirit never truly yields itself voluntarily. No, there are situations that compel you. Yours is to give God permission to have access to that making process. Hmm. So while the devil is mocking you and saying your life is not rising, no job, no money, you are broke, and your entire six hours prayer is full of a determination to force things to manifest. God is saying things will come. They will so come but not to this version of you. You are the one I want to change. I, I will change you to a version that cars will not stop coming to. And that is when before you call he will answer. He will give the heathen as an inheritance for you. Do you believe what I'm saying? Man of God, there is a version of you that members have been sent to come to. Not this version. No. Not the weak and the lazy version. Not the competitive and the jealous version. No. So while you pray and say, Lord, bring increase. He now says, go for seven days fasting. And at the end of it, you are disappointed because you think in that instruction, he will tell you the strategy for church growth. And you will never hear anything about church growth. Your disappointment becomes part of the raw materials for your making. Now you understand that the Bible says, for we know that all things, all, with the mastery of a chef, God is able to make all things. Your pain, your disappointment, they all become ingredients to produce something that is presented to the nations as a trophy. We call it glory. The glory of God in and through your life. Can I tell you, 
show me any man in scripture in modern history and in the church today who is a champion of faith if the only thing you see is promises run away run away when you listen to great men you don't listen just about the promises the promises are flashy but the report is why the promises remain are we together if we ask Pastor Poju now to tell us the story of his journey of this church and his journey with God you are going to find many points in the history of this church where certain promises when the promises don't come they are on their way sometimes they are not delayed by demons they are delayed by the laxity in your transition this is why it's important you manage your prayer about God destroying enemies because maybe you will be learning in the course of this conference who an enemy of God is an enemy of God is not someone you hate no an enemy of God is anyone who becomes a consistent interruption to the manifestation of his will even if it is Jonah <laughs> the jealousy of God fights anything that takes his place and interrupts his purposes even if it is something he gave that is why in the realm of the spirit promises don't amount to much not that they are they are inconsequential they are needed but your track record your testimonial in the spirit my dear sister please hear me whilst you are trusting God to give you a job in Lagos whilst you are trusting God to manifest certain things I want you to not disrespect the health in your prayer that has come as a result of that the health in your word study life somebody told you oh come I will sleep with you and give you a job and you refuse and now you are feeling stupid for refusing because there are many people who are just conscious of things and they are saying what is there and you are saying but God after refusing when when Joseph refused uh, what's the name of that woman Potiphar's wife you would expect God to just intervene and reward him immediately do you know how many years he spent in the prison for refusing that was his track record you see the pattern now There are many times believers think just because of standing for righteousness, certain promises manifest immediately. They will come, but you will celebrate their coming when you change. That is when you see the beauty of the manifestation. Can I tell you, there are many people's Christian lives today who have become defeated because promises were manifested to the wrong versions of them. The version that received the one billion was not a consecrated version the version there are certain temptations you have no business going through if God grants you grace to change so there are times you are saying God just give me this one billion and God says it is in your destiny to have it but you don't know the temptations that come into the realm of a one billion owner you don't have the stamina to survive the attacks Lord promote me to this office and he says it's in your journey so you may go to the place of prayer and promotion is at your mind it is not wrong but you will find out that God's interest is not the promotion and the, the more you yield to that becoming the faster the promises come listen for many years I studied why a lot of people have balloon results today you are up tomorrow you disappear the reason is because most people do not understand the power of this heritage of a spiritual testimonial 
I will sing. I will praise. Even in my darkest storm, through the sorrow and the pain, I will sing. And I will praise. I lift my hands to honor you. Because your word is true. Listen. I lift my hands to honor you. Because your word is true. Sing it. I lift my hands to honor you. Because your word is true. I lift my hands to honor you. Because your word is true. I will see. Can I tell you? Satan becomes utterly frustrated over a life that values reports beyond things because the basis of lust is things the basis of the excelling of temptations over men is their passion for things james said from whence cometh this thing among you does it not come from the lust of your heart he said ye desire and you have not when a man focuses on becoming you have mastered the art of frustrating satan becoming because he knows that having it or not having it will not affect your prayer life. Having it or not having it will not affect your word life. Having it or not having it will not affect your coming to church. If the car is not there, you will trek with honor and rejoice while you are on your way to church. And nobody will know while you are celebrating. The day you give testimonies, men will say by your behavior, there was nothing that showed that there was these ups and downs. And you will tell them it's because I have learned that the most superior dimension to faith is my spiritual evolution. But can I tell you, for everyone who remained alive in scripture, who contended for a good report, eventually, promises came without end. I like the way the book of Job concludes. He says, and Job, God turned the captivity of Job. Give us please, as I wrap up, 42 and verse 10. And Job, God turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. He got to a point where he said, do you know what? I trust God. I'm no longer the issue. God, just keep, take responsibility over what you are doing. Let me focus on my friends because I want them to also have that transition that I'm having. Let me intercede for them. There was a dimension of God Job only knew through the storms and through the pain. And the Bible says, let's finish it so that you will see that God is faithful. He does not scam people. He's not a fraudster. His word can be depended upon. It's just the dynamics of his operation that many people do not know. He said, rejoice not over me, my enemies. This is what gives believers the staying power. So that the day they call you and say the promotion has come, you say, all right, I will respond to you. I'm in church walking. And they say, where is your excitement? They say, no, I had it since. My growth is more important than that. Do you believe this? Let's finish that scripture. I have to wrap up. I have about three minutes left. The Bible says also the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Twice. Verse 11. How did it come? There came unto him all his brethren and all his sisters. So he had brethren and sisters. Where did they suddenly go to? During the time of his travail. And the Bible says, all they who had been of his acquaintance before, and they did eat bread and bemoan him and comforted him over all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. I'm sure you have a better spiritual understanding to that expression. The Bible says, and every man, watch this, gave him a piece of money. So his money was already in the hands of men. The things you are praying for are not in heaven. Believe me, 
they are already in the hands of men because the earth has he given to the sons of men and the earth is still full there are four elements of dominion according to psalm 24 number one is the earth number two is the fullness the resources there number three is the mindset that governs the cosmos number four are the inhabitants when god wants to give a man true dominion he connects you to have authority across these four areas the earth land the resources that are in the earth as for the earth out of it comes bread he says the increase of the earth is for all that even the king is fed by that which comes from the field you don't find money in heaven you don't find all of that they all reside within the cosmos your promotion is here already listen when the bible says all things are yours i want you to believe it the delay in its arrival is not necessarily you're not understanding god that's not the only reason, but the major reason for most believers is that God's interest is not just to give you things. You see, when you are really inclined in the realm of the spirit, you will see that things do not have so much value. Satan was willing to give everything to Jesus if he would just bow down. He showed him the glories of the world. Is that in your Bible? And said, all these things have been given. All these things have been given just bow have a report that you've worshipped me since you are the express image of God let me have it that you are that weak and you have acknowledged my superiority and things can go this is the system of negotiation when Satan comes to men do you know how men lose their souls the Bible says what shall it profit a man if you would gain the whole world and lose your soul the question is there is a relationship between gaining the cosmos and losing your soul Gaining in the cosmos is transactional. It will always be at the expense of your soul. You can know a man who has been blessed by God because he prospers even as his soul prospers. This is the one thing you cannot have with Satan. The moment you prosper by Satan, the focus is on your getting things. That's what made men, it makes men rich fools. You now understand the problem of the rich fool? He had things. But no track record. He said, my soul, find rest on things. And God said, this is a foolish man. So when God wants to walk with you, the first thing is not to give you a car and a house. Don't think that I hate cars and houses. So I hate poverty more than you. So don't think that I'm talking with some kind of, no. But I want to show you a more excellent way. Because when you understand faith, there is a grace that gravitates things to you. I want you to believe this. There was an anointing when Noah had a, a, a track record with God. There was an anointing that came upon the ark. All the animals, without being called, they began to come by themselves. This is the reason why the lives of many people look mysterious. From nowhere, someone will stand up and hold your hand in ministry and say, I will help you and I will support you. And you are wondering, where is this coming from? It is because once there is that track record in the spirit, then you will understand the dynamics. So all that we have learned, as far as obtaining promises are concerned, they are valid and powerful and true, consistent with the operation of the kingdom. But I'm showing you another layer to it. Not a replacement, but an addition. A more superior addition that in the economy of God, before we now deal with the matters of confession and the rest, I will teach you all those dimensions in addition to all that you have learned. But that at the back of all your manifesting what you call faith, there is a settled understanding that it is not the result that controls my knowledge of God's faithfulness. No. Can we pray? Please rise. I will hold on through the storm and I will hold on to your word. My life will soon reveal you're the lifter of men, the lifter of men. In one minute, my time is up. I want you to pray and say, Lord, I contend for a testimony in the spirit, a testimony of my love for you. 
a testimony of my honor for you regardless what happens around my life i believe you for the best as declared by your word you are not a man that you should lie nor the son of man that you should repent but i add to my faith experience today the other side of faith building testimonials in the spirit that i love you 